Hello, everyone. I'm Wei Dong. I'm from the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. Today, I'm happy to be here to share our paper with the title Continuing Observation Under User Level Differential Privacy. In the big data area, more and more data are collected by the organization for the further analysis. However, releasing the query result directly can cause a privacy leakage. For example, U.S. Census Bureau collects people's data and then releases population statistics. However, we can reconstruct the original data based on these statistics by solving a set of equations. For example, we can reconstruct 46% of U.S. Census data in 2010. These data are still anonymous, but they can further be identified with some public confirmation. The solution here is we can add some random noise to the query result so people can now learn any sorry, so people can now learn any individual's information. This technology is called differential privacy. Let's see the formal definition. The data set is denoted by D, and for D D prime, we use small D to denote their distance, which is the number of individuals' information they differ. And we say D D prime are neighbors if their distance is equal to one. And the mechanism M is said to be epsilon DP if for any neighbors D D prime, their outputs are epsilon indistinguishable. That is, for any output subset Y, the probability of M D in Y and the probability of M D prime in Y differ by at most a factor e to the power epsilon. Epsilon is usually a constant between 0 0.1 to 10. And DP has several composition properties. The first one is a group privacy. Here, if M preserves epsilon DP and DD prime has distance, has distance bounded by K, then MD and MD prime are K epsilon indistinguishable. The second one is called basic composition. If we input D into M1 and M2 sequentially, then we need to double the privacy budget. The third one is a parallel composition. Here, x1 and x2 are, are two disjoint domains, and one individual can only draw data from one. If we separate D with x1 and x2, and then input them into M1 and M2, we do not need to separate the privacy budget. So far, most DP works consider a static setting where we where the input is a static data set and we answer the query one time. And there are two DP models. The first one is called tuple DP. Here each individual corresponds to one tuple, and we protect the privacy of tuples. The second one is user DP. Here each user corresponds to multiple tuples, and we protect the privacy of users. Let me give the transaction counting as an example. Under tuple DP, we protect the privacy of transactions and easy setting. Adding Laplace noise with scale proportional to one over epsilon is enough. And here we only require constant noise. Under user DP, we protect the privacy of people. And in this setting, adding constant noise is not enough. The state of the art algorithm achieved error to the big O kappa D, where kappa D is the maximum user contribution in query result FD. And in this example, that is equal to three. Here I use tilde big O to hide some log factors. Now let's consider the dynamic setting. Here the input is a stream where the item xi belonging to user ui comes at time i. And we also allow no data comes at some time. And the prefix data set di is all data come on or before time i and we answer the query at each time. And in the dynamic settings, there are also two DP models. The first one is event DP. Here is the individual correspond to one data update, and we protect the privacy of data updates. And the second one is a user DP, where each user can correspond to option number of data updates, and we protect the privacy of users. Actually, in the dynamic setting, the, each problem at each time can be regarded as a problem under the static setting. And the event DP in the dynamic setting corresponds to tuple DP in the static setting. 
as a user DP in a dynamic setting correspond to user DP in the static setting. Therefore, for the query answering in the dynamic setting with finite time domain, one simple idea is to use basic composition to divide the privacy budget and then answer each query independently. However, this idea cannot cover infinite time domain and has a very large error. For counting query under tuple DP, this achieves the error of big O T, where T is a time domain size. But here, our target is to achieve the same error as a static setting, which I mean constant error. Actually, this target has been achieved for counting query under event DP if we ignore some log factors. For finite time domain case, the idea is to manage the time domain in a binary tree. The tree has log t plus one levels and each node corresponds to one time interval and one counter. And it's trivial to see each data update can only affect one counter in each level. So we only need to divide the privacy budget by log t plus one to answer each counter. And we can use these counters to answer the queries for all time. For example, the counting query at time seven can be computed by the counter for interval one four plus five six plus seven seven. For even in time domain case, we can build trees with incremental stasis. Since each data update can only affect one tree, we do not need to divide the privacy budget further. Then let's consider user DP. And this will introduce a new challenge. The prior work can only study the, the query with bounded global sensitivity and limited output range. Actually, such query is very restricted can on, and even does not involve counting query. As mentioned before, the key property of counting query under event DP is that each individual can only affect one tree and can only affect one counter in each level in that tree. However, these properties do not hold under user DP since each individual can correspond to arbitrary number of data updates. One simple idea is to truncate user contributions. More precisely, given any tall, we only retain the first tall elements for each user. In the, first in the previous example, when tau equal to two, we will truncate the atom at tab seven. And after the truncation, each user can have at most the tau data updates. So we can further use the group privacy to divide the privacy budget and cause the algorithm for counting query under event DP. And for each time i, this idea achieves the error tilde big O tau plus kappa di times the number of users with contribution larger than tau. The first term is the noise, and the second term is the best. Then the last thing is to select a good truncation threshold tau. For finite time domain case, we can use tau equal to kappa dt, which is a maximum user contribution for the whole stream. However, this idea achieves the error to the big O kappa dt for all time for all time i. But our target is to achieve error kappa di for each time i. And these two values have a large gap, especially at the beginning time. Like kappa dt can be as large as t, but kappa d kappa d1 is only one. Besides, it requires a strong prime knowledge to know kappa dt, which is also unachievable for the infinite time domain. Our solution is to dynamically bound user contribution. Here we use tau equals to two, four, eight, and we found the time point to double tau. We use some tricks and only consume the price budget at its doubling. And for the ice time of doubling, we use a price budget uh, roughly equal to epsilon over a plus one square. And after each doubling, we truncate the stream with new talk and give a new call for the algorithm of counting query under event DP. With this idea, for counting query under user DP, 
for each time I we achieve error to the big O kappa di, which is the same as the static setting if we ignore in some log factors. Besides, we also extend this idea to other functions. For some query, we also achieve the same error as a static setting. But for max distinct count and maximum frequency, we show the same error as a static setting is unachievable. Finally, I list uh, our stereo future directions. Actually, compare with static settings, there are more open questions under uh, in the dynamic setting under both event DP and user DP. The first interesting problem is to answer SQL queries in the dynamic setting. Recently, we have seen some works for answering subgraph counting queries, which are special cases of SQL queries. Another interesting topic is to release machine learning models like k-means and Boson tree in the dynamic setting. Besides, it's also very interesting to consider a more complex setting where we answer multiple queries at each time. That's all my presentation today, and thanks for your listening. And any question? Uh, and any questions? Okay, if not, maybe I can ask you uh, one quick question. So what, what is the key difference between group differential privacy and the user level differential privacy? Uh, I mean, for so user group, level differential privacy, each user has multiple records. Okay, for group yes. differential privacy, you protect more than one record. What's the difference? Uh, yes, uh, actually for group privacy, you have to know the uh, the number of the number of tuples each each user can have, and that number should be known before. But for user DP, you do not know that number. I mean, the, each user can correspond to arbitrary number of tuples. I think that's a key key difference. Okay, thanks. Okay, if no more questions, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>